In the secret world, some corners are far darker than others. But there is great knowledge to be found in these places, if you have the presence of mind to look. Hello, welcome to Questions. This is a short form lore series where rather than giving you the answers, I merely pose the questions. I will try to stay as light on spoilers as possible, up to the point of the game being discussed. Today's big question is, what happened to the Polaris? The Polaris is the first dungeon in the game, and from its description, just a cargo ship that ran aground, you would be very unprepared for what you see when you arrive. Instead of a shipwreck, this is a nightmarish hellscape of seaweed and impossibly tall stone pillars. Was this island always like this? It seems impossible. As we progress forward, we find signs of human habitation. Most notably, this electrical cable fallen into the water. But where was the electricity going before it fell? We also find these rickety boardwalks. They look ancient, rotted. When were they used last? Who built them? And what were they for? Intermittently, we can find lanterns lighting our way. Convenient, isn't that? The drogs certainly don't need lanterns. So who is lighting our path? Past the boardwalk, we can find even more signs of habitation. These looking more recent. There's the electric light posts. These logs for traction and to prevent the sand from sliding down the hill. This is definitely designed for humans. And upon cresting the hill, our suspicions are confirmed in a way that only raises more questions. There's a house here. What is it doing here? How did it even get here with these impossible pillars of stone? There's a lighthouse too. Is there anyone up there? How would people even get there? This entire area seems impossible for humans to traverse, but also designed for them at the same time. Drog here also displays some behaviors that are seen nowhere else. The pods and impregnated zombies are used not for reproduction, but as defenses. They explode when you get close. The drog are inhuman monsters, but they still reproduce. And it seems very odd throwing your babies at enemies like bombs. Another strange thread running through this is that most of the drog in here have electrical powers. Again, that's something never seen anywhere else. Granted, it could just be because they're in a dungeon, and it makes things more interesting, but when it comes to lore, why do these drog have these specific powers? While most of the bosses are named for this clan of drog, one of them stands out. The Varangian. Interesting name, that. What does it mean? And when we get to the ship, we find these enormous tendrils, or roots, or tentacles, or whatever they are. They're bigger than anywhere else in the game, wrapped around this ship, crushing it. What are they attached to? Everywhere else we've seen these giant pods, but we can't see any pod here. It might just be the fog, or maybe there's more to it. Finally, there's the Cthuloid Erdrog. This is supposedly the progenitor of all drog. But what actually is it? From the bees, we know it was birthed from dreams. But whose? And then there's the final big question. The drog are aquatic creatures. So why did aquatic creatures need a boat? Thank you for watching this video. I will have answers on Tuesday, but feel free to speculate on your own. If you liked this video, do the YouTube stuff. You know what to do. But far more importantly, send me a buck or two on Patreon. That'd be the best way to show your appreciation. And if you did not like it, that's not what you said last night, sailor.